Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to this domestic live stream. Uh, my name is Tom Mueller. I'm a graphic designer and creative director. And today um, we are here. Uh, thank you for joining me to kind of talk about my new course. And the trailer has gone live today. Uh, my course is uh, graphic design for fiction and visual storytelling. And in this uh, live session today, we're basically going to, well, we, it's going to be me, actually, honestly. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, explain to you who I am and what I do and, and where I come from and what has led me all the way to this point that we're here uh, talking about a new design course on Domestica. Um, what we're going to do, what the plan is, at least, unless something goes horribly wrong, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, do an introduction, uh, give you a little taster of what the course is going to be like, what you will be able to learn, what we've kind of created for you. And then hopefully you'll have loads of questions and I will try to answer every single one of them. We're kind of looking at a 40, 45 minute session. Could be shorter, could be longer, but we're going to give it everything we've got and just have a little bit of fun. And yeah, let's do it. So, like I said, I'm Tom. Um, I'm from Belgium originally. I've been living in London for the last 20, 22 years now, I think. And I'm a graphic designer. I studied graphic design in Antwerp, in Belgium. Uh, I moved here in a very nice summer of 2000 and started to work in, in digital design, digital design websites, product design, that kind of thing. But growing up, I was always massively into comic books. And that has basically been a passion of mine ever since I was seven years old. And over the years, that has always been a kind of like through line in my, in my work, in my career. And whenever I had the opportunity, I would always try and do some comic book adjacent work. Um, they say a lot of graphic designers are failed comic book artists because everyone kind of grows up reading comics at, at one point in their life. And that was basically that was basically what I wanted to do initially. I wanted to become a comic book artist, then I fell in love with design, fell in love with digital, moved to London, started working here, and kind of really tried to embed myself into the um, into the, the the kind of like the work that I wanted to do. And that was like, you know, comic books. And eventually I started to get into, um, into that industry and work my way kind of through various projects and publishers and clients. And then as you can see just now going through the screens, I ended up working with Marvel Comics and 2000 AD, 2000 AD, very British, massive British institution in comic book publishing and storytelling. X-Men, of course, the kind of flagship title of Marvel, um, which I've been very fortunate to 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 work with for the last almost three years now, kind of helping them um, create a, a brand new visual language for for the, the their X Men franchise, and you know that's one of the things that I'm kind of going to discuss in in my course as well, kind of just talking about my my kind of creative process uh, as a whole, and also kind of looking at what designing for fiction what does that actually mean what is the course actually going to be about and it's it's for me personally the whole course is kind of like a distillation of my my creative path and my creative process um over the last i would say 10 15 years that i've really started to like hone my my skills as a designer and definitely started to work in in the field of 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 serialized storytelling graphic storytelling and and using all the um the, the the knowledge and the experience that i've built up through working in various design disciplines and industries outside of comics and outside of publishing and bring those influences into comic books into video games into uh designing for for music artists and designing music websites that kind of thing and that is basically what we're going to touch on in this course to to kind of um talk about what these how that how that basically can be expressed in various uh through various examples so for me 
because I think it will be different for everyone uh, looking looking at those at those kind of influences and titles. But graphic storytelling is really for me using the discipline of design and infusing a story with those design bits. So basically, um, to give you an example, you and and again, this is something that I'm kind of trying to show and tell in in the course. Uh, let me see. I've got like you can't see this, but my desk is basically littered with books and comics right now, so I can kind of pull out um, examples. So one of the things that um, that I want to that that we're going to discuss in 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 the in the course, and one of the examples is um, hope you can see this with the glare, but is one of the one of the series that I worked on called Drifter, and it's it's basically a story about to give to 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 try and distill it in a nutshell it's a kind of a, 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 a kind of western a kind of story of a drifter trying to find out why why he is where he is where he crash landed uh on on a kind of like a desert planet and everything but it's basically how do you how do you use design to embellish the story and 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 how do you use um branding and and the skills of brand identity and visual design and logos and all that stuff how do you use these skills to lift up the story to become an act where design actually becomes an int uh, like a, a, an, an integrated part of um of of the story and, and the adventure that you're trying to tell so one of the things that i usually do when when we do these kind of when we do these kind of projects is i start sketching and of course, in the course, um, of course, in the course, um, what we're going to do is go through that whole process. Um, and you know, starting with, you know, you'll see a lot more of this in um, in 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 one of the lessons. Is like, you know, starting to sketch ideas, starting to like really understand what the topic is is about. And I think that is the same for any kind of design project that you take on, whether it's for storytelling or it is for a, a technology client or it's something fashion related you have to kind of understand the brief and for stories it's it's exactly the same with the additional kind of um the additional challenge if you if you want is that you're basically talking about fictional fictional worlds fictional settings fictional uh kind of kind of problems that you need to solve and you kind of create you try to to bring those stories into the real world by giving them a shape and a form and a language and a color and and, and a typeface so you build the whole identity around the idea of a story and then that becomes expressed on book covers on uh the logos on those covers the, the the pages inside that story if there are like chapter pages for example how you um how you basically build a, a consistent brand treatment basically to 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 help tell that um tell that narrative and make it really strong so i mean there's loads of loads of examples that i can show like we've got this one uh drifter where i just uh, talked through i think one of the case studies that I'm going to go um, in quite some depth in the course is um, Versus. And of course, on the other part of my desk is the um, the X-Men rebrand. You can kind of see I have a thing for reds and in like dark colors. Um, but basically it's it's kind of using design to you know, I'm just going to flip through a few things. You see X-Men X -Men logos everywhere, but it is really about creating, like using design to create like a, a, a visual statement basically, and, and to help help shape the story and, and really immerse um, your audience into, into, into a book. Could be a book, could be a comic book, could be, um, you know, the same the same ideas and the same principles are kind of applicable to any kind of story that you that you want to tell. Obviously, for this course and this kind of um, the task and and the project that we're going through uh, in my course, it's all about graphic storytelling and using using the the the, the format of graphic novels and and books 
as the kind of as the carrier to you know apply your design so basically in the course we're going to look at this this is basically my my subject matter for um for our our project and what this is and this kind of goes back to like the little intro where i was talking about like you know where i come from what i do um this was a a project i worked on back in i think 2004 2005 for an english publisher called mantor and one of the you know besides actually designing the, the 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 branding the logo and the kind of like the full publication design i had the opportunity to write and and illustrate a short science fiction story and i'm just going to show you like one selected spread and that was basically you know a done and dusted deal a couple of years ago and i thought it would be a very um a very nice idea to kind of look back at that and see how I would approach that story and, and that kind of idea that I had and kind of remix it and refresh it and kind of look at it. How, how, how long is it now? Like 15, 15 over years and see and, and use all the knowledge that I've acquired over that time and all the things that I've learned and really applied in a new and different way. So in the meantime you know i've done stuff like this i've done stuff like you know x-men like some more x-men and kind of using all that acquired knowledge to really look back at that old story and see like okay how can we how can we do something interesting with that and how can we kind of modernize it so to speak and i think you know even though this is this is a kind of like a, a a project course and a kind of you know an exercise these are actually real world problems that we're addressing because it's not uncommon for publishers to reissue um works after x amount of years and repackaging them doing giving them new covers new formats uh so yeah that's kind of that's kind of the task that i set myself like how how would i approach this after so many years and taking taking this as the starting point obviously with any project it's like okay how how are you going to create that project and what are the barriers that you need to cross to get to a successful outcome so to do that you have to go through all these different these different steps and so one at one point in in as you'll see in my course I'll explain what I like to call, it's like a seven step process where you try to formulate a brief, like actually sit down, write out what you're going to do. Because imagine if you're working with a, uh, with a client, then you're going to have to go through those same processes. So that's all the stuff that we're kind of going to, going to go through in the course. And then of course, you know, it's the it's the sketching and the kind of creative process to eventually, you know, quick tease to kind of come up with, you know, a result that 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 embellishes that story that we're that we're designing for. And that actually creates a here's my cat. Um, and that's that's where where we um, what we're going to where we're going to end up throughout the course and through the lessons. And um, I think we're, we're going to be ready for questions now. This is, this is amazing. I thought I had to keep going for a lot longer, but thank you. Um, keep them coming. Um, so yeah, let's, there's a question on the screen. What's my motivation as a creative? What's the main motivator? Um, it's always trying to, to um, how to best describe to, to try and outdo myself with each and every project like doing something i mean i'm i always say i'm always the happiest with the most recent stuff i've done because it's new and it's it builds on everything that i've done before and it's it's basically like solving a new challenge and like having something new to play with for me um i think i try to i mean i'm i'm i always say i'm like i'm very serious about the craft of design and 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 the work 
but I also really like to have fun with it and and I don't want to be too serious about it but it's basically um trying to like constantly learning it's always like oh let's do something new that's that's in a nutshell it sounds really basic but I think when you boil it down to to the core of why I and I suspect a lot of people in creative industries and a lot of designers do the work is to always do something new to do something fun to learn to to create something new and in the process kind of creatively solve problems solve people like help solve problems and help people tell their story using design as a tool oh that's a tough one what career advice can i give to people who want to do the same the same thing that i do don't just get out of my lane that's what i say no that's that's just a joke um it's it's hard work it's hard work and patience um i think you need to i think you need to learn how to not look at design as a strict nine to five job i mean don't work silly hours but i think it's important to kind of live and breathe design and and really it has to become a passion and i think that that attitude of just like kind of being being absorbed by design and trying to 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 be absorbed by very different kinds of design makes you a, a, a I think more skilled into into what you want to do, um, and 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 broadens your horizon uh, to to kind of come up with more interesting creative ideas and more interesting creative solutions, which will help you stand out from other designers. Because the thing is that you need to to kind of look at what you what makes you unique as a designer. So what's what is your creative voice, and I think what I try to what I try to do in 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 my course as well is like it's not going to be a, a, a tips and tricks of like illustrator shortcuts because there are other people way more skilled at explaining how to use programs to to make make things. I think the 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 main the main kind of drive in in my course as well is kind of looking at looking at ideas from a from a creative point of view it's not so much about the technical execution it's the concept it's the it's the idea behind the design and i think that comes from just absorbing absorbing design from all kind of corners to create that kind of insight and language and i think when you when you have that then you need to combine that with basically you know being 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 driven and 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 working hard and kind of you know we've got social media now for better or worse which is an amazing tool to just push your work out there to publish your work and share it with with you know an audience that is bigger than you probably know and that's how i mean in the past and sometimes even today that's how i i attract clients by sharing the work by sharing the kind of work that you would like to do yourself and it's one you know it's one one trick in 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 the book to to kind of attract people talk about talk about what you love to do talk about what you love don't be afraid to share your opinion and your insights and then that is kind of what has led me after a lot of years working and, and and grinding uh to to where i am now and and there's a there's a very clear through line of constantly doing what you want to do chipping away at that and then eventually that's that's what you're going to be doing next question Oh, art block. Yes, I do, but I'm not too worried about it. I think it's fine to to occasionally just 
don't see a way out of something. Uh, and the thing I usually do is either like I just stop and I do something else. I start reading a book or I start working on another project that I have going. I usually have like multiple, multiple projects on the go at once. And it helps to just kind of switch off one, start on another. And then you're kind of really deep thinking into one kind of problem solving uh project and then you suddenly go like oh bing here's here's that's that's the thing i needed to solve the other uh the other piece of design and i think sometimes it's like a technical thing sometimes it's really like oh how do i really get those curves right in a logo or how do i i have to i have to design something that is completely out of my comfort zone which is actually those are usually the best challenges and where you really get to like learn and evolve but i i'd say don't be you shouldn't be afraid of like having having like a creative block or an art block you just move on and you try to distract yourself with something else and then the solution you will think of the solution it, it's it's there you just don't immediately see it oh what project am I the most proud of? My Domestica course project, of course, of course. And you should all subscribe to my course to find out why. No, um, I think it, it changes. It changes really because um, each project has its own specific thing that I would kind of focus on and say like, right, I'm really proud of this in this project, but I'm also proud of something else in a different project. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm actually most proud of at the moment, I can't really talk about because it's work that, um, that is currently in development and that for me presented uh, a completely new creative challenge and working on a, on, on like, uh, a, a different, a different scale, a different level. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm not going to lie, but this, um, was quite a big, uh, a, a big project. I mean, it's still, it's still ongoing and I'm really proud of um, the kind of the work that, that I was able to do for Marvel on the whole kind of X-Men line as a, as a kind of, kind of as an outsider, because as a designer, you're not involved day to day in say like, you know, the, 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 the storytelling ideas you kind of come in and, they present you with like we're doing this how do you how do you use design to 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 level that up and to embellish that but i would say you know like i just said i always i always like the work that's that i'm doing right now now as a kind of as a as a thing of being proud of and being interested in um i would say the stuff that's coming up and hopefully um that will be released soon ish even though i'm not sure if i can actually talk about it yet but yeah i'm i'm most proud of the stuff i'm always like doing now because every time that's a new that's a new challenge and it's for me it's kind of like oh i've 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 done something i haven't done before that's cool but yeah i think it's 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 it will vary for, for it's different for for everyone but i think i think it's it's good to always look ahead and 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 not try to dwell too much on the stuff from from the past and very very smooth segue into the next question um i use programs that everyone really uses in 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 the creative industry i don't use anything special um pen and paper always um, as a start to kind of just get things going to be really fast, I think. Um, and then it's, it's, you know, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, After Effects sometimes, but I would say the three, the three biggest, the three biggest um, apps that I have always open are Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign. And in this course, we'll be looking at me using, working in Illustrator and InDesign to create 
you know, the, to create the project, create the visual identity for, um, for the story that we're, that we're going to design for. That's, that's, those are my, my go-tos um, pretty much constantly. Occasionally I'll use Figma when I have to work in digital, but you don't have to worry about that. Illustrator and InDesign are basically my two, um, my two power tools, basically, day to day. How did I enter the world of comics? Well, by reading them, um, first and foremost, and then kind of became a a kind of a wish fulfillment. Like was when I was growing up, you know, oh, I love comics. I want to be in comics. I want to draw comics. Then you figure out that drawing comics is actually incredibly hard. Um, so, oh no, maybe I'm not going to design, uh, draw comics, but maybe I can work as a designer in comics. And I basically got into comics from a very odd angle because I started, you know, as I was saying earlier on, I started my my professional career in digital design, designing websites uh, and that that sort of stuff. And through that, because I was still way into comics, I would like constantly check out comic artist websites. And one thing led to another and I started talking with one artist that I was really uh, a big fan of, uh, an Australian artist called Ashley Wood. And we started talking one thing led to another and i started doing ashley's website and one website became two three and four and then that website turned into starting to do like print design this is one of the earliest um books that i designed and and kind of designed the logo designed like you know the interior title pages that kind of stuff and that basically opened got my foot in the door in the industry so to speak because now i had um now i had a, a piece of work that i could show around and then that piece of work opened another door um which led to me working with liam sharp an amazing artist and creator um to work on on mamtor publishing and then it kind of started to, to, to snowball. That led to another thing that led to me working with Ivan Brandon on Drifter, on Versus, which, um, which I'll discuss in depth in the course. And that led to many, many other uh, projects to eventually uh, working with Marvel on the X-Men franchise. And it's always been been... I've always been enamored by the stories and just the, like the visual language and the visual energy of, of, of comic books um, and how they basically manage. I think that was something that I noticed like really young when I, when I started reading comics, it's like, it's, it's like comic books are this like amazing mix of everything, imagery, graphics, typography, big cool sound effects logos on covers like you name it it kind of has everything and i think that has always stuck with me as a designer to kind of have i mean graphic design is the same thing it's it's kind of like an assembly of images mo moving graphics typography graphic shapes everything that i love in design is represented in comic books and vice versa and it's it's an immense pleasure to be able to work in both those industries. Mm. That's a that's a long question. Starting out, how do you best begin to develop your own personal style and fight the imposter syndrome? Oh, do I have a story for you? And that's not actually in the course, but we can we can let that one slide but while i was in college i was an immense fan of david carson so much so that i like almost like literally ripped off his designs in my work um lucky for me my college professors immediately spotted that, that failed me had me do the project over again and kind of go like look we get 
influences, but you should kind of use those influences to find your own voice. And I think that's um, that's kind of stuck with me um, through through the years and through my career. And I think you just develop your own style, like do what you do, what you love, like just don't. What I try to say is do be conscious of trends and and what's out there be be trend conscious but don't be slavishly following what everyone else is doing just because everyone else is doing it because a trend will come and go very quickly sometimes and if you are too slavishly following those trends and and aping styles what from from other designers and kind of going like because it's cool you're going to be your work is going to be outdated really fast and the thing is like those designers that everyone is kind of looking at and 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 want to that you want to kind of mimic you want to mimic them because they're basically just doing their own thing and it just so happens that what they think is cool is what other people think is cool and that is kind of why it's cool. And so I've, I've, I mean, I've gone through this, of course, uh, you know, starting out and like, especially in, in, in the, the, the early years when I was a designer, it's kind of like, you know, you try to find your voice and you're basically just absorbing a lot of, 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 of influences, but then you start to filter those influences through your own taste and you kind of go like, look, I don't really need to, copy this design or that design i can kind of do my own thing and just learn from from other other designers other styles like doing research uh like in, in into like design from past decades the last century you just use those things and you mix them up it's like cooking you you take you you follow a recipe from a cookbook you're going to start adding your own stuff you're going to tweak it until it's like it's maybe similar but it's your dish and it looks it doesn't look like whatever you read in the book anymore now it's yours and you start building on that and you start creating like a, a completely own style and 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 viewpoint and that's what then makes makes you successful as a as a designer that was a very long answer for, well, it was a very complicated question. Um, have we had that question already? Yes, we have. Um, what are the biggest obstacles? Oh, so many. I mean, everyone that's here in the, in the, in the session, everyone that works in the creative industry will have like the same obstacles. Um, time, time is usually the main obstacle. Um, because everything needs to be every everything has a schedule and i think it's it's an obstacle but it's also it's also a gift um because it kind of forces you to like be decisive and 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 use i think obstacles are there to be to to be used as a as a as a tool um i mean it's the same thing like when you when you work for say a specific client or a specific brand and they go you can use these three colors and this font that you've never used before. Go make something with it. That's that can be an obstacle, but it's also a really interesting creative challenge. Um, what other? I mean, I don't really stand. I, I don't really like pause too much on 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 obstacles. There's always going to be an obstacle. There's always going to be something that doesn't go your way, um, and you just work your way around it. Um, I'd love I'd love to hear like what what obstacles you encounter um but I've never be, I've never come across something that is completely immovable so just just roll with it sway be like a be like bamboo you can kind of bend but you don't break and you just go through it This is good keep the questions coming uh yes you can you can make a can i make a career in design without being able to sketch or draw yes you can um it's 
I, I, I mean, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, I know, I know many designers who don't come from a kind of artistic background in the sense of I've, they've learned how to draw and to sketch. Um, whereas, I mean, I've, I, I went to art college and everything. So I kind of, I mean, and I've been drawing my whole life. So for me, it kind of becomes second nature, but it's not, I mean, you learn how to sketch eventually like you'll i mean if i look if i look in my sketchbook here some things i mean it's just boxes it's nothing it's nothing special and i think as long as you learn how to sketch out your idea however basic it is to get to to, to communicate something then you're already sketching and you already know how to draw um, it doesn't need to be complicated because that thing that you need to sketch when you start designing in, in, in Illustrator, Photoshop, in design, uh, you're, you're, you're going to kind of using those same, those same tools and the same kind of mindset. So the leap backwards to actually sketching and drawing, I mean, it comes naturally, it, it, it eventually becomes part of your of your creative process all right we're in the last few questions let's go people this is going well oh you and james oh, who james white i'd never <laughs> uh what are the most influential designers to me personally well um that's a that's a good question. So, um, in the course, I kind of go through some of my early influences, and you know, some 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 influences that are still kind of with me. But I think the work of of Leila Massimo Vignelli is like a massive. Used to be a massive. Used to is um, massive influence on me, and I still kind of refer to to their work um often just to kind of you know i like looking at it it kind of makes me excited to 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 design um swiss graphic design mid-century um swiss modernist design i think i mean we could we could have a whole session of me just like flipping through box and pointing out stuff that i really like but um i think to be honest the biggest influences or like the favorite designers were my colleagues when I moved to London in 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 2000 um I was this little like designer from Belgium like had just two years of experience not really had done anything anything that I thought was was good I was still very much learning and I ended up working at a uh, a design agency called virtual studios and in that um that company was basically just a a amazing place filled with amazing people and amazing designers and I ended up working with um, the likes of G Monk and Michael Young from uh, Michael Paul Young from uh, you work for them and James Widegren who used to um, who 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 ran the agency Your Majesty and and used to run Threeo which was a was a very popular design blog back in the day. Um, so I was kind of confronted with these kind of these guys who were like bombs of like creativity and just like insane creative energy and that rubbed off on me and that kind of showed me that you can actually as a as a designer working in an agency you can do your own stuff you can there's no one that says that tells you that you have to stop designing at five o'clock and go home you can you can build your own you know back then digital world so we would we would like you know have personal websites as digital playgrounds and kind of push each other to be like to do more crazy stuff and like really use design as a kind of as a tool for for expression and experimentation and that kind of I think meeting meeting those guys and being friends with those guys 
really shaped my attitude as a designer from that point onwards because from that moment on i've not really stopped doing doing what i what i um what i want to do and the kind of like just always designing and you know obviously james uh james white is one of my favorite designers and people um uh, in the industry i think james does this amazing stuff he's like another example i think of someone who is very resolute in what they like what they like doing and just create their own kind of identity and their own world um in design so yeah i think i think we're 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 basically kind of going to wrap it up so um oh no we're not what is branding for fiction good question um branding for fiction is using visual identity using all your tools as a graphic designer um using your skills in branding visual identity logo design and use those skills and use those disciplines to infuse storytelling to create immersive worlds and use design as a tool to guide readers and guide your audience through stories and that's just a very very kind of top line description um i go way 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 deeper into that explanation showing you various case studies and 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 examples in my course where i can really explain the different styles the methods the the the, the creative process from sketching to prototyping to to final design um that's basically that's what designing for fiction is it's tell using design to help tell stories and i think that's it uh we're 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 done this was this was a lot of fun uh thank you everyone for tuning in for for listening to me babble for 45 minutes i hope um i hope it was inspirational i hope you enjoyed it um i hope it got you excited to do some design and i hope that you're interested enough to sign up to my course and then together we can like really go nuts and do some really cool stuff uh designing stories and designing for fiction thank you la idea es como algo muy frágil se me fue la hebra <laughs> i'm going to show you some examples this is what we've got behind me qué más preguntas tengo por aquí cómo descubriste que lo tuyo era